about 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the Joint Staff who had used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me and he said, sir, you got to come in. You got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later, and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, and he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. The truth is about the Middle East is, had there been no oil there, it would be like Africa. Nobody is threatening to intervene in Africa. The problem is the opposite. We keep asking for people to intervene and stop it. And there's, uh, there's no question that the presence of petroleum throughout the region has sparked great power involvement. Whether that was the specific motivation for the coup or not, I can't tell you, but, but there was definitely, there's always been this attitude that somehow we could intervene and use force in the region. Because I'd been through the Pentagon right after 9-11, about 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz, I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the Joint Staff who had used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me in. He said, "Sir, you got to come in. You got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, "Well, you're too busy." He said, "No, no." He says, "We've made the decision. We're going to war with Iraq." This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, "We're going to war with Iraq. Why?" He said, "I don't know." <laughs> He said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later, and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, and he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. This is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq. My fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. And then Syria. We had a chance to talk about uh, a, a wide range of international issues, including the situation in Syria. Uh, and. I have to say that all of us who have been seeing the terrible pictures coming out of Syria and Homs recently uh, recognize it is absolutely imperative for the international community to rally and send a clear message to President Assad that it is time for a transition, it is time for uh, that regime to move on, and it is time to stop uh, the killing of Syrian citizens by their own government. Lebanon. They both had different reasons, the State Department and the White House, for wanting Israel to do it, encouraging them to do it, and supporting them. Our Air Force 
worked very closely with the Israeli Air Force for months before this, not necessarily with a deadline knowing when it would happen. It was always going to be whenever there was an incident, they would take advantage of an incident. Of, it would, the word I used was fortunate timing when Hezbollah grabbed some of the um, Israeli soldiers in early ju July. That was then a pretext, I think that's the only word, for a major offensive that had been in the works a long time. Libya. Today we can definitively say that the Gaddafi regime has come to an end. The last major regime strongholds have fallen. The new government is consolidating the control over the country. And one of the world's longest serving dictators is no more. Somali. Well, violence isn't only on the rise in Afghanistan. In fact, it looks like America's shadow wars have now increased by one. Drone strikes have long been reported in Pakistan and Yemen, but now there's news that a week ago, a U.S. drone aircraft fired on two leaders of the Somalian organization Al-Shabaab. Sudan. President Obama is sending 100 combat-equipped troops to Central Africa to advise local forces on getting rid of one of the continent's most vicious operatives, Joseph Kony, the head of the Lord's Resistance Army, a group responsible for atrocities across the region. It's the first open deployment of U.S. ground combat power to Africa since the Black Hawk Down incident in Somalia in the 1990s that killed 18 troops. U.S. troops may wind up now in Uganda, South Sudan, the Central African Republic, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. It's part of a growing military effort to engage in Africa. Finishing off Iran. I said, is it classified? He said, yes, sir. I said, <laughs> I said, well, don't show it to me. And I saw him a year or so ago, and I said, you remember that? He said, sir, I didn't show you that memo. I didn't show it to you. Uh, I'm sorry, what did you say his name was? <laughs> I'm not going to give you his name. So go through the countries again? Well, starting with Iraq, then Syria and Lebanon, then... Libya, then Somalia and Sudan, and then back to Iran.